scale playing forms an essential part of most piano examinations. Bear in mind, however, that there are many benefits to be derived from the practice of scales and arpeggios, apart from improving your exam marks. These include a general improvement in your technique through the various kinds of scales practiced, a greater facility of playing over the whole keyboard, and a better understanding of key. To check how well you know your scales, practice reciting the following away from the keyboard. The key signatures of your scales and the change notes in the minor scales you are learning. The names of the notes up and down. One octave will suffice. The notes the thumb or fourth finger plays. Relate individual scales to the groups to which they belong. For example, the scales of C, G, D, A and E major and minor all have the same finger pattern. Write out your scales and arpeggios on cards one scale per card, which may even be colour-coded, such as blue for major and red for minor, and so on. Important points, such as key signatures or fingering, can be written on the back. Divide your scales into groups and keep the cards in separate envelopes, so that you can work on one group in a practice session. Work through a set of scales, putting them into two separate piles, one containing those that were accurate the first time, and the other in which there were mistakes. Play every scale that goes wrong three times in a row correctly before going on to another one. If it goes wrong the third time, play it three more times. If you are working on scales and arpeggios in all keys, practice them sometimes in a cycle of fifths. Draw a circle as shown, if necessary. The outer letters represent the major scales, and the inner ones their relative minors. If you read it clockwise, you can play the sequence of sharp keys. Anti-clockwise will give you the flat keys. Also, mix up your scales and arpeggios by playing every kind you know that starts on a particular note. For example, a C major, C harmonic and melodic minor scale, a chromatic scale on C, and an arpeggio, dominant and diminished seventh on C. Whatever the requirements, practice scales separately as well as together, listening carefully to each hand. If a recommended minimum scale speed has been given, use the metronome to work your way up to this over a period of time, keeping a record of the metronome mark you have reached in your practice notebook. Aim to keep all of your scales the same speed. Generally, scales will be one speed and arpeggios slower. Check that the tone is even and that both hands are playing together and at the same level of tone. A small crescendo going up and a diminuendo going down will also help make your scales sound musical. Here is B major, played two octaves. Check the shape of the hand. For the most efficient playing, aim for fingers which are neither too flat nor over-rounded. Imagine you are holding a bubble gently in the palm of your hand. Make sure your fingers strike the centre of the keys and keep them close to the keys and so avoid a high percussive touch which can result in undesirable tension. In broken chords and arpeggio playing, the same principles will apply, except because of the wider distance that must be spanned by the hand, the fingers will be flatter. In both scales and arpeggios, when turning the thumb, keep it light. This will be helped by the movement of the arm in a steady sideways direction with the elbows kept well out. Here is an E harmonic minor scale and arpeggio.